Now we take our completely analog ultrasonic transmitter, we point at the transducer, and... Alexa, what is the temperature? Nothing. Bullshit. Hello, and welcome to another exciting episode of Coke and Strippers, where we have fun with electronics. So today, I have a very cool package. At least I think it's a very cool package. I haven't opened it yet. Yes, and there's my address. If you want to send me something cool, maybe we'll build a project out, out of it. Uh, I guess I'm maybe embarrassed if, if this isn't what I think it is, but we'll find out. I, um, I ordered from the great beyond. Ho, 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 ho. Look at the, oh, this looks, oh, this is much nicer than I expected. This is a Zenith Space Command remote. Yeah, don't look at the rest of the below ground layer. Anyway, I, wow. I mean, I, I expect it to be really old and cruddy and crusty, but no, look, it's bright and shiny. I have never had one of these before, and I'm so excited about, look, it's a push button, push button. So, I, I, I've dealt with remotes before, you know, these things. Here's some random old remote. Um, but these things are different. These, right, if you study these things, you, you'll find out that, that the, uh, the binary signal is, um, is modulated on top of a carrier, like in the 40 kilohertz range carrier. And I always knew that that was based upon an ultrasonic signal. Uh, some, somewhere I learned that that remotes used to be ultrasonic, right? So the 40 kilohertz is, is pretty much above human hearing, uh, and somehow th this hang on into electronic realm. So I've dealt with those before, but I just recently found out about these. This is the actual ultrasonic remote control, and what I didn't realize is not only are they ultrasonic, they're entirely mechanical. There are no batteries. There are no transistors. I mean, this is this is this is it. This is this is a simple thing. What it does is there are two bits of metal in there, and these are basically hammers of some kind that hit those tuned metal bars that resonate at the appropriate frequency to change the remote. So this is very cool. Let's take a look. Let's see if we can take a look at the inside of this thing without breaking it. That would make me very sad. All right, back to the above ground layer where we have a little more space to work. Oh, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. Can't believe how nice it looks. So I really hope we don't break this thing. Ultrasonic remotes. All right, here it comes. Oh, oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. We have this. Oh, this looks like magic itself. So, um, let's see. I'm, I'm going to try to click one of these. There we go. Nothing flies out of place. So, I can see when I click these that there are hammers back here, and these hammers fly forward and hit the ends of these metal rods. Uh, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there they go. And then these metal rods, of course, are tuned to different frequencies. They're held in here by a plastic clip, and that's all there is to it. There are the hammers on the end and the tuned metal rods that generate the different frequencies. And these are in the 38 kilohertz range. Uh, we'll take a look at more of that later. And then this really cool grill on the front. I don't know, there's, there's, oh, it's metal. It's, the, uh, to me, the cool thing about it is I don't ever remember seeing a cool grill that was like really functional. You know, this is functional. That's where the sound comes out. It comes out the end of this grill. Oh, this is, this is going to be a great project. Zenith. Space Command! Oh, so pretty. Oh, my precious. Oh, one more quick note while I'm in here. Uh, look, there, there's an empty slot here, and there's just a cover on the front. So there's a cutout there, and, and, and a place in the back. So if 
I, I think they made these with, with different numbers of buttons. I'll go look up how many different ones. But this one could have been a four button unit just based upon a different faceplate and including including another button. All the, all the molding and, and all the cutouts are in place for this to be a four button one. Could have been, could have been. Oh, one more time. Space Zenith, Space Command. <laughs> I will do one more thing. I think these knurling marks on the end are just to identify them. At first I thought they might be for tuning, but look, if we measure these, that's a 61.3 millimeter. This one is oh, about 65.2 millimeters. And this one is 62.9 millimeters. So they all have different measurements and, and that's, I bet that's what drives the frequency. Looking for the right transducer to pick up these ultrasonic sounds about microphones. And I remembered these uh, uh, ultrasonic rangefinders. They should be perfect. I soldered a couple wires just back to the receiver section. There's no power or anything. I just want to see what it looked like and check this out. Bang! Is that beautiful? I mean, look, and it rings for, I don't know, a second. That's fantastic. And, and if you don't have a, a digital storage oscilloscope available, you do have a digital storage camera. So I took a picture of it and that looks like about a one, two, three, four, five, like 4.8, um, 4.8 units across. So we can calculate the wave uh, frequency. That's 4.8 times 0 0.000005 enter and if we do one over that's somewhere around 41 kilohertz fantastic once I pull this thing off the board the amplitude goes off the charts let's see what we got let's crank that up to a couple of volts close range. I still can't read it that quick. One, two, three, four, five. I mean, that could be, that could be, uh, one volt. Peek, peek. Maybe more. All right, I picked a Teensy 3.2 for this project. It's like a, you program with the Arduino IDE. It's very similar, only it's a lot faster, has a lot more processing power, uh, more memory, um, faster ADC, and a DAC. It also comes with this cool card that explains all the pinouts. We're just gonna add some, uh, solder some pins onto it. So for comparison, next what we're gonna do is grab an infrared remote these are the current ones, uh, and uh, a couple of minutes on a digital storage oscilloscope so that we can look a little more detail at the way those signals work in modern day remotes to compare and contrast to this uh, completely analog space command. Okay, when I capture an old handheld remote uh, on the oscilloscope, that's the modulated carrier, and the frequency of it is 37.3 kilohertz. Here we go, this is what it looks like uh, as we zoom out. We have some kind of preamble and we'll see, uh, let's assume for the moment that that uh, ones are these positive uh, peaks. So we see uh, like perhaps a one zero, one zero, one zero, one, a couple of zeros, one, one, uh, that kind of thing. But if we zoom in, what we see is that inside of those peaks, those aren't on all the time. That's air carrier that we saw before. So we're modulating this carrier into ones and zeros. All right, I started out uh, to implement a Gertzel filter to look for the particular frequencies uh, that I want out of the remote. Uh, but you know what we say here on Coke and Strippers, screw that, <laughs> that's complicated. It turns out that 
this this is a pretty good uh, high pass filter on its own just because of the way it receives the sound so all I have to do is look for a threshold voltage um, and and that's easy so I'll program the Arduino uh, well this teensy in this case to look for a threshold voltage uh, when it sees it it triggers the Uno and the Uno sends the text out to uh, the speech synthesizer simple as that there is some documentation online for this entire system the Zenith Space Command service manual, not too hard to find. Uh, when I pull it up, I look over here, um, and it actually gives the frequencies for uh, up to the four different bars. So later on, maybe I'll come back and actually try to, to run a, a Gertzel filter, which is basically like running single buckets of a discrete Fourier transform uh, to pull out those frequencies. But we're good for now. We're gonna take our completely analog transmitter, we'll point at the transducer, Watch for the lights, the speed, the... Oh, here we go. Alexa, what is the temperature? Right now in Radford, it's 52 degrees with cloudy skies. Today's forecast has intermittent clouds with a high of 58 degrees and a low of 39 degrees. <laughs> How cool is that? Yes. If you had fun today playing with this retro technology like I did, don't forget, give it the big thumbs up, subscribe, share, like it, all those things so we can keep on doing these things. But most importantly, don't forget to spend your money on coke and strippers. Until next time.